Hi, welcome to week 3 of Ignite the Spark series and in this week's video, we will be exploring the features of Spark. So Spark has got many features like it is really fast, the language support, so on and so forth. So let's explore the features together. Okay, so now let's talk about Spark. <laughs> so far we were talking about Spark, but let's look at the definition and other kind of thing. So this is the official website of Spark. It says unified engine for large scale data analytics. So I will explain what is this unified engine because I need to do a separate video to explain this, but we understand large scale analytics, right? So Spark is a framework which can do big data analytics or large scale data analytics. And here you can see Apache Spark is a multi-language engine for executing data engineering, data science and machine learning on single node machines or clusters. Now typically Spark runs in a cluster, not on a single node machine. Uh, especially if you are using Spark in the production environment, then it's actually in a cluster. And it says multi-language engine and it also says data engineering, data science and all. So this requires some explanation. So as of now, just understand that Spark is a big data processing engine which runs on the cluster. Now let's look at some of the features of Spark. The first thing is it's simple. Now this is not a marketing gimmick or something. What do you really mean by simple is writing Spark programs are very, very easy as compared to the previous frameworks. For example, uh, we had Hadoop and MapReduce and writing MapReduce programs were very complex. Spark programs are very easy and simple to write. You will see that. Spark is also fast. So when you compare Spark with MapReduce in certain benchmarking tests, it was shown that Spark programs ran 100 times faster than MapReduce. So when you put a, a test of speed, then Spark definitely wins. Now, if you're wondering uh, how Spark is so fast, one of the reason is the source code of Spark is actually written in a language called Scala, which itself makes overall Spark faster. And apart from that, Spark does something called in-memory processing. Okay, so what do you mean by in-memory processing is wherever possible Spark is going to use RAM to hold and process your data. When you compare it with traditional frameworks like MapReduce, they, they kind of like used to use hard disks and RAMs together. And whenever there is a hard disk involved, uh, programs will run very slow. So Spark does this in-memory processing where it, it will maximum utilize your main memory or RAM to store and process the data. So that's how it is faster. Spark is also scalable in the sense, typically Spark is installed in a cluster, a group of machines, right? Now, if you feel that, okay, I have created a Spark cluster, there are like 10 machines and I need more computing power, I can scale it from 10 to 100, 100 to 1000, sky is the limit. So there is literally unlimited scalability. The more machines you add in a Spark cluster, the framework will automatically scale. It's not gonna tell you like, okay, now you are adding thousand machines, I cannot work so fast. So it is practically uh, unlimited scalability and unified. So I will come back to this point called unified later that needs some explanation. And another interesting fact about Spark is these are the languages supported by Spark. So if you want to write a Spark program, you can use Python, Scala, Java, R. And we will be using Python because our course is PySpark, right? I mean, uh, so PySpark is nothing but Spark with the Python language support, but it also supports other languages like Scala, Java, and R. I personally am a Scala developer and a Python developer, and I love Scala. I mean, there are a lot of advantages of using Scala, uh, but Python also has equal amount of advantages as of now. So we will be using Python to work with the Spark here, and Spark also supports SQL. So you will be able to write SQL queries and analyze the data using Spark. Uh, the reason why this is important is sometimes you're working, working in a project and probably most of your teammates are very good at Java. Maybe all of them are good at Java. In that case, they can seamlessly transform, I mean, they can seamlessly start using Spark using the Java support. Or if you're comfortable with Python, you can use that or R for that matter. 
And the last thing that I want to talk about is it is the most widely used engine for scalable computing. And again, thousands of companies, including 80% of Fortune 500 companies, use Apache Spark. So that is why it is so popular, whether you are going for an interview, whether you're talking about big data, somebody explaining projects, Spark is literally everywhere. And Spark also has a ever growing ecosystem. See, one thing that um, uh, people need to understand is a tool is so good if it can work with the other tools, right? There are so many tools in the industry, but compatibility and interoperability are really important. And this is another area where Spark shines. Spark can work with a lot of existing tools. For example, uh, libraries like Scikit-learn uh, and PyTorch from the machine learning world and Pandas, Spark naturally works with them. Now, if you look at uh, business intelligence tools like Power BI, Tableau, Superset, Spark can interact with them. Now, if you're talking about storage platforms like NoSQL databases like MongoDB, streaming data ingestion platforms like Kafka, again uh, elastic or kubernetes spark is very well integrated to the existing ecosystem now if you are wondering like why this is an important feature i am learning spark and why are you saying like spark will work with all these tools what is the use case then i will explain this in the next video uh, but just understand that spark can seamlessly integrate with all your existing tools from different background if you like the series so far and if you consider these videos to be very useful then check out our course in udemy which talks about apache spark and databricks by signing up for this course you can learn real world hands-on experience with apache spark i'll pin the link in the description